Hello and welcome to SQL Server Analysis Services 119 Reporting Actions. This is actually a continuation of the video SQL Server Analysis Services 116. So if you're not familiar with Actions and you haven't seen 116 yet, please watch that first, then continue on to this one. The reason these were all recorded separately was so that you can mix and match in case you don't care about, say, drill through actions, you could skip that and the uh, others stand on their own. The, here and here I'm going to talk about reporting actions and this is actually a type of URL action that allows you to call reporting services reports very easily and I think that uh, it, it's very useful and some people use it actually as an alternative to drill through actions uh, you saw if you watch the drill through actions video you saw for example the column names you couldn't really do any uh, changing of those column names you couldn't sort by columns you couldn't rearrange the columns you can do all that kind of stuff with a reporting services report so some people use those kind of as a substitute for a drill through but basically a reporting action just generates a URL that calls a report in reporting services and passes parameters to it in the correct format so you can be somewhere in the cube pull that value out add it to the it will add it to the URL string and then pass that uh, properly and when you do pass parameters from a cube to reporting services there's one very important function that for whatever reason is not well documented but uh, it is uh, something that you will most likely have to use and that is URL escape fragment I will show you an example of that here in the demonstration so let me get into BI Dev Studio and if you like to follow along with the videos as I've found a lot of people like to do the uh, I'm just going to build the standard reporting action but there's a trick to it. So let's talk about what that is first. Okay, here I am in the simple cube that I have built, simple sales cube, and it's just a scaled down version of the AdventureWorks cube, just a, two measure groups, a very few measures to it, and just a few dimensions. But this is going to be calling a reporting services report eventually, and so let me talk about that for a moment. I'm going to call, this is, again, I'm just going to use the standard example that comes with analysis services but if you happen to be using analysis services 2008 the example a reporting action calls a report that they say well you have to install that too and that report does not come with the sample reports for reporting services 2008 I don't know why they did that but I'll go through this quickly but you can watch it again on the video if you want to follow along and you have 2008 what you have to do is go to codeplex.com and you can append that with SQL Server samples.codeplex.com to get to this point. And what I'll do is I'll scroll down here and say that I want uh, Microsoft SQL Server Reporting Services. It will bring me down to here and it shows me the reporting services samples. And if I go to download, that will take me here to the download page for these. But these are for 2008. The report I want isn't in 2008, it's in 2005. So over here along the right hand side, I'll click on 2005 SP2A. Now the SQL Server samples rs.msi, that's what I want to download. So once I download that, it just downloads a single MSI file and I double click and execute and it adds it to the always easy to remember path C colon program files Microsoft SQL Server 90 which is 2005 so 90 samples reporting services report samples adventure works sample reports and there is the project so if you open up the SLN file the solution file right here double click on that it will open it up in bids and the first time you do this it will have to update it convert it to a, a 2008 project but that's fine it works at least and this is the only report I've tested but it works fine but let me walk you through and show you this report so that you understand what it's doing and oh after you open it up by the way you will have to update the two data sources even though this report only uses one uh, the catalog here just said adventure works before I just clicked edit and then let it choose AdventureWorks 2008. Same thing basically with the analysis services one, AdventureWorks DW, it just said AdventureWorks 
or AdventureWorks DW before, and I just had to drop this down and choose 2008. Now, once I have this, this is the data connection. Here's what the report is actually doing. If I open this up, this particular report has uh, a couple things going for it. First of all, it is using analysis services uh, data only. It is not using the um, relational source at all. And if I view the report data for this, you'll see that here are the two data sets, product data and product list. So there is a parameter that will list for me, in this case, the product categories. So that is coming from the cube, and then the actual data on the report is coming from the cube as well. So it's, it's fairly straightforward. I'll preview it here for you and give it a little bit more room. And here's what the report looks like. Notice that here is my drop down of the various items that I can choose, and I'll narrow this down to just accessories and view the report, and the data comes back. So this is the report I'll be calling from my cube, and I'll be passing in this product category. So that's what I'm after. Now, after you go through this, you need to deploy it, and once it's deployed, then you can open up the report manager, and you'll see these are the original 2008 reports, and this, these are the new 2005 that I just updated, and it is this sales reason comparisons report. That's the one that I'll be calling from my cube. So at this point, I'll go back into the cube and I'll go to the actions tab and actually create the reporting services action or the reporting action. It is this third button on the toolbar up here. And of course, the first thing is that it needs a name. And um, I'll just say sales reasons. And now, of course, it needs a target. And in this case, that target will be attribute members because I'm going to target the members of the category attribute. So I have my product category and which one is it? That's what I need to pass in. So the target object will then be in product. I'm interested in product category. So the members of the product category attribute are what I will be doing. Now the condition, this is optional. I could use this to say, uh, to, to let's say, knock out one of the categories if I don't want people to be able to look at that one. Let's say I didn't want clothing. I could exclude it here using an MDX statement. But we'll leave that uh, alone. Now here, the report server, okay, this is uh, fairly straightforward. I'll local host here. And now I need the actual path to that particular report. Well, I can get that by coming in here and pulling up this report. And I could just copy and paste this. Of course, it's got some percent uh, two Fs and, and things in it. So an easier way of looking at that is to do it like this. And that is to put in report server. So I'm at localhost, that's the machine name, and then report server, and then a question mark, and then the path to it. So adventure work, slash AdventureWorks sample reports, and then slash, and then the name of the report. So what I have here is the server name, and then report server with a question mark. And you have, of course, the server name slash reports, but report server is, is basically the, the name for the web service. So a report server and then just the uh, name of the catalog um, and then the name of the actual report. Report format HTML5 is typically fine, so I'll leave it like that. Now remember that the report did have a parameter to it. Okay, that's what accepted the, uh, the, the category. So what I need to do is add in what that uh, a link to that. And I, I failed to show you that when it was here, so I'll reopen the report briefly and show you what this looks like. So in this particular report, 
if I look at it, the report itself, whoops, going to the wrong place. If, if I open up the uh, report data again, then under parameters, there is one parameter product category. And so that's the name of that particular parameter, product category. So what I need to do here in my cube is tell it the name is product category. And now I need to set the value for it. So the value for it, uh, I can't load the cube metadata. Bear with me as I reconnect here. So the, what I'm interested in passing here is under product, I'm interested in passing the category. Now I don't want a specific category. So what I want to enter here is the product dot category. And now I need to add a, a couple things to this. I want the current member. And I need the unique name for it. It's possible for, let's say, maybe not the product category, but for two products to have the same name and belong in different categories. So the unique name makes that item truly unique in the cube. So I need that fully qualified path in a sense. Now, if I were to use it like it is, then it would look something like this. It would be product.category. I'm just, well, in fact, I don't even have to show you something like. I'll show you exactly what it would look like. So, for example, oh, uh, yeah. Here, let's get, uh, let's choose bikes, for example. And notice that it's actually a number here and it has an ampersand in front of it. Well, I have these square brackets, I have the ampersand. Uh, these things can really freak out a URL. So while what I have should normally, you would think, be enough, this is where you have to use that special function to format it properly for a URL. And remember that the name of that function was URL escape fragment. So I'll put in URL escape fragment, and I will wrap the entire text of what I've done uh, inside that. Now I should be able to check this and pass if I haven't uh, made any typos and click OK. So now when it builds this string, it will automatically add in the product category parameter and then whatever I've currently chosen should format that correctly for URL and pass it in with it. Down here under additional properties, I can do some uh, other things with this. If I click on it. The invocation interactive batch or on open, this is only a hint to the client program. If I set it to on open, it does not mean that this action will automatically run when someone opens the cube. Application is also a hint to a client application telling it what application runs this action. Something that uh, won't use here. Description is just an optional description. The caption is how this action will show up. And if I don't put anything there, it will just show up as sales reasons. I could put something different in here and I could optionally have it change to show the value of whatever they currently uh, have clicked on. Uh, if you want to see an example of that, check out the standard actions video. For now, uh, I won't even bother putting anything in here. Let me just go ahead and deploy this and we'll see this action in use. So now that the deployment has finished, I'll return to the browser, I'll clear it out, I'll reconnect. And now remember that this targeted a product category. So I don't even need to put a, a measure out here, I just need to take my uh, product categories. And I can do it in a hierarchy or I could just drag over the product uh, category uh, attribute by itself. And let me get rid of the filter up here. And so I have accessories, bikes, and clothing. If I right click on this, I now see the sales reason, sales reasons action, and when I click on that, it should launch the reporting services report, and notice it did pass accessories into that parameter, 
and I can see the report uh, for accessories. I can return to my cube browser and I can right click on, for example, clothing, click sales reasons, and I should now get that report for clothing. And you see that being pulled up properly as well. So that is the way to take a cube and launch into a reporting services report. Um, you can see here that I targeted an attribute member. I could have potentially targeted a cell and passed, say, the current product, okay, the, the product.current member. I could have passed the time.current member. I could have passed to a report that accepted multiple parameters and basically simulated a drill through. Uh, and, and gotten the columns, I gotten everything laid out exactly the way I wanted it and had a lot more power. And in fact, the drill through in that case could actually be a relational report that's calling the star schema. Uh, very flexible what you can do here. So this is an incredibly powerful tool if you need to tie some additional reporting into your cube and want the user to be able to launch that. This works just the same if the user was using Excel or any other third party client tool. They would right click, do, uh, click on that action and it would launch the uh, reporting services report. Now, if you do that, obviously don't use localhost as the server name uh, because it's, uh, reporting services server will not be residing on everyone's desktop, but hopefully that's fairly obvious. So that is uh, the reporting action, and uh, I thank you for joining me.